Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Introspective, and whether or not you're excited for Min Min and Smash, I think we can all agree that her reveal trailer was quite possibly the best one yet. And because of it, my hype for Smash was instantly reignited after almost 5 months without any updates, and now I can't wait to get back into playing once she comes out. Which got me thinking, Smash Ultimate's reveal trailers have always been one of the most talked about aspects of the game. It's one of the few times where the community is collectively excited for something. And so, I thought for today's video, we take a trip down memory lane and look back on all of the moments that made the reveal trailer so special in the first place. And then, at the end, I'll give you my personal ranking of them. So, without further ado, let's board the old hype train and get started. One of the most underappreciated moments in all of this, I think, is the very start of the first reveal for Ultimate in Inkling. A pure white screen sets the stage for everything that's to come. It's like a clean slate, and everything we were used to is just resetting at a time when we weren't expecting it at all. And then... What a way to kick things off, that iconic shot of Inkling looking at the Smash Ball. It was a perfect two-for-one moment to let us know that Smash was coming, and Inkling was joining the party. They knew exactly how to make us speculate as well, showing the silhouette of Link, but in his Breath of the Wild form, as well as faint shadows of characters in the back that we spent weeks trying to guess. And it was all worth the wait, because they blew our fucking minds with what they showed next. As you may know, Super Smash Bros. is an action game about smashing beloved game characters off the screen. Yo! Nah, I'm just fucking with you. It was more like this. Mario! And then, everyone is here. The moment where all the talks of a port flew into the blast zone. And in my opinion, the best possible choice for this moment was Snake who seemed to be the fan-favorite veteran to make a return after his absence in Smash 4. Everything from here on out was a high-speed thrill ride, all culminating with one of the most highly requested characters of all time, the Big Boy. At this point, we were all hyperventilating, and then we got the name, Ultimate, the sleek black and white look up on the screen, and that glorious same-year release date that made us all drop Smash 4 instantly and never think of Bayonetta ever again. Oh dear god, NO! Kicking things off was Daisy, who introduced the term Echo Fighters to us in the first place. Not exactly how a lot of Daisy fans wanted her in the game, but many people were just excited to see her included, and she remains a popular and strong character to this day. Man, that Ridley trailer was the shit. Nice build up at the start, and then seeing him on screen was almost too good to be true, considering how long people had been requesting him despite his apparent size issue. I love when he speared Mega Man with his down B, that was a great animation. And this was after Sakurai said this, too. We've made including every single fighter ever our number one goal, so I'm kind of hoping you aren't expecting too many new challengers. Oh, it's fine, Mr. Sakurai, we get it. I'm sure it took years to just do all the original characters. Okay, they just revealed five more characters? It's five fighters, five stages. Was he just fucking with us when he said that? Oh, he meant literally every fighter ever, not just Smash. Let's rewind it back to the second Ultimate Direct and the reveals of Simon and Richter, aka the death of Luigi. It was sick to get some new retro Nintendo reps in the game and further push the Echo Fighter concept, which was also joined by two more Echoes in Dark Samus and Krom, Krom especially being a highly requested character. But then we got the PS de Resistance, King K. Rule, finally being added to Smash. I wanted to see this fat bastard in the game for as long as I've played it, so that was one of my personal favorites, and the presentation was absolutely hilarious as well. Following this up was Isabelle, and this shit was just funny. In hindsight, having her in the game as a fighter is just so Smash Bros. She's adorable and fun to play as. She also blurred the line between what made a character an Echo or not, and that caused a lot of debate for some time as well. At this point, the game was nearing its release date, and we all expected at most maybe one more fighter. But this man Sakurai does not fuck around in the slightest. Three more fucking reveals in one fell swoop. Ken, Incineroar, and Plant. And then the reveal of the fighter pass as well. That was eight new fighters being announced right before the game dropped. Honestly, we were all just dumbfounded at the work ethic of this man. Ken and Incineroar were revealed together, which I thought was really cool. It was sick to see them fighting in a cinematic, and it made sense because they both associate with fire. Plant is my main, but to this day, I'm still in shock that I can even play as him. By far the most random and bizarre character choice yet. 
but Sakurai is a wacky man, and I love how this character turned out. The angry Mario walking scene is still to this day one of my favorite trailer moments of all. And then, the fighters pass. After everything we had already gotten, after being told not to expect much in terms of new characters, we get an additional 5 announced. At this point, I don't think anyone expected to see any of them revealed anytime soon, especially considering Plant wasn't coming out until after the game's release, but this is Masahiro Sakurai we're talking about here. Literally one day before the release date, we get the first Fighter Pass reveal at the Game Awards, and it's not just any character, we get Joker from Persona 5. Up until this point, other than Ken, every fighter revealed was Nintendo, so to get a huge third-party character like this to lead off the fighter's pass, the sky was the limit for the possibilities. Joker's trailer was a reflection of his game. Flashy, stylish, hype, and some great music to boot. This was a lot of people's favorite reveal for a lot of reasons. I just wish it wasn't during the Game Awards. I completely missed it because I wasn't watching, and I'm still fucking pissed off about that. Later on, we got another double whammy, Hero and Banjo. Now, outside of the Fire Emblem characters, I think Hero was the most upset people ever got over a character. And I was just hype as fuck because I love Dragon Quest XI, and this trailer was so perfect. All of the Dragon Quest references in it were so creative and fun. And then the reveal of multiple heroes was just hype as fuck. Hands down my favorite trailer except for maybe Min Min's. And then, my dream character Banjo was finally revealed after decades of waiting. What a special moment this was. They continued the rare tradition in the same style as K. Rule's reveal, so while it lacks some originality, it was still so amazing to see them in Smash. And while I don't play them due to how they function in game, it's a moment I'll never forget for as long as I live. And then, we got what was probably the most exciting character reveal yet. Motherfucking Sans and Smash Bros, baby! What an epic gamer moment! Cue the Megalovania! Oh, and we also got Terry. Yeah, Terry's trailer was awesome. I love the animation style and the history lesson at the start, and you could tell how passionate Sakurai was about this character, which made me appreciate Terry even more, honestly. If you look up the definition of controversy in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of Byleth next to it. This reveal was absolutely ass-blasted by the Smash community, by far the most disliked trailer yet, and it was understandable. After four major third-party reveals in the Fighters Pass, to end it on another Fire Emblem character was really anticlimactic for a lot of people. I have no issues with Byleth, but they should have revealed them like second or third instead in my opinion. As far as the trailer goes, it was the most boring one in my opinion other than maybe Isabelle's. It was apparent from the start that it was Fire Emblem, and then most of it was just dialogue. Although the way they introduced female Byleth was pretty cool. But all was forgiven when the god Cuphead was added. That was genuinely awesome to see one of my favorite indie games of all time being represented in Smash. Well, at this point, I think everyone was pretty much satisfied with the roster, but there was also a Fighter Pass 2 announcement. And not just another 5, but 6 more fighters to be added. We were all in awe at this point. Sakurai is well on his way to proving that he's one of the greatest game developers of all time, and he's showing no signs of slowing down creatively. Min Min is one of the most unique fighters yet, and her trailer was absolutely fucking spectacular. The fast pace and animation style, the bromance between Falcon and Kirby, the constant misdirection of many popular ARMS characters getting snubbed, and then the theatrics of Min Min herself. It was an incredible way to bring the game back after almost half a year of no new updates, and it's the reason I was inspired to make this video today. We also got some more dope costumes like Heihachi and Vault Boy. So we discussed all the trailers, and now it's time for me to rank them. But first, I want to talk about my number one ranked pair of earbuds, Raycon. Raycons are some of the coolest earbuds on the market, and it's a product that I was really excited to team up with because I myself love them. I had seen a lot of celebrities like Snoop Dogg talk about them, so I gave them a try because I'm a big hip-hop fan, and I love these earbuds in particular because the bass in them is great, and they have a nice full sound that other earbuds have, but with the most comfort of any that I've owned. There's a wide range of colors and patterns, I went with the classic black, I think they look really sleek, and the everyday E25 earbuds have 6 hours of battery life with seamless Bluetooth pairing, and are nice and compact with a simple charging port that I love. All for half the price of other top audio brands, while still sounding just as great. I use these every day not only for the sound quality, but for the comfort, style, and convenience as well. If you want the best in sound quality and comfort, head over to buyraycon.com introspective to get 15% off your order on your own pair of Raycons, or just click the link in my description. Thank you again to Raycon for sponsoring. Alright, let's get ranking. 
Now, keep in mind, I won't be ranking any of the Echo Fighters or Mii costumes, as their reveals weren't necessarily full-fledged trailers other than Richter, but he'll just be grouped with Simon here. And, this is just my personal list of opinions. I don't consider this an objective list. So, going from worst to best, my rankings would be... Byleth. Too much dialogue and showed their hand too early, but a cool way to show female Byleth. Isabel. Hers was cute, but it wasn't anything that special, and it's overall kind of unmemorable compared to the rest. Plant. This one was just weird of course, but nothing that crazy either. Although, I did love the angry Mario walk. Banjo. An amazing character to include, but the trailer was basically a recreation of K. Rules. I understand the approach with the rare characters, but I wish they did something more exclusive to Banjo-Kazooie. Simon and Richter. I love the crossover between Castlevania and Luigi's Mansion, but the reveal was pretty predictable from the start, although Richter was a nice surprise. Terry. I like how they started it with the consoles, and showing a bunch of King of Fighters characters throughout was a nice touch as well. Ken and Incineroar. This one was cool to see two new fighters duke it out, and the theme of fire was pretty sick as well. Solid trailer overall. Ridley. I mean, this is what so many people waited for, and it didn't disappoint. Some really cool action moments in this one made it really memorable. Inkling and Smash Ultimate's reveal was iconic, enough said. I'll never forget that shot of the Smash Ball in Inkling's eye, a great two for one moment. Joker, sleek, stylish, and overall a huge surprise, but certainly not the last. I just wish the timing of it was different. The Game Awards was an odd choice, but still a really great moment in Smash history. King K. Rool. This was just so fucking awesome in so many ways, from the interactions with DK and Diddy, to the DDD gag, to the reveal itself, every moment of this trailer was absolutely perfect. Midmin, what an awesome reveal. Perfect in every way from the visuals, to the cute moments, to the action, to Midmin herself. I really hope the next five reveals are this high quality. And my number one favorite reveal was Hero. So many perfectly recreated Dragon Quest references throughout, the reveal of multiple heroes was great, it just made me appreciate my favorite game, Dragon Quest XI, even more than I did before. This one resonated the most with me personally, and it's something that I love to go back and still watch to this day. And there you have it, my personal rankings and a trip down memory lane. I'm so grateful for how many characters we have in this game, and I think I speak for everyone watching when I say thank you so much to Mr. Sakurai and the Smash Ultimate team for all of their hard work. What would your rankings be? Or even just tell me which reveal was your favorite in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Deuces!